Hi, this is Dr. John Bergduff. Today we're going to be talking about circles, and in particular the equation of a circle, and where it comes from. So we've all sort of had an intuition for what a circle is from when we were little children, but I bet we have a little bit of trouble defining it exactly. We sort of think of it as, oh, that's that roundy, roundy thing. Well, that's not really going to be precise enough for us to work with. So I have here for you the formal definition of what a circle is. A circle is the set of all points in the plane that are at a fixed distance, which is called the radius, from a fixed point called the center. So if you like, you can imagine this. Suppose you have a string whose length is r, stands for radius, and you pin one side of that string to the board. And then you stretch the string out and you draw whatever the end of that string would allow you to as you move it around. Like maybe you have a, a pen at the end of the string and you move it around. That set of points is going to be a circle. Now, how do we define or how do we come up with an equation for that circle? Well, interestingly enough, it's built on the definition and the distance formula. So here's what you do. Imagine that you pick any point on the circle, any point at all, and I give that point the coordinates x, y, where the x and the y are left as variables to truly represent any arbitrary point on the circle. I just put it here at the end of where I drew this radius. Now, the radius is the distance between that point out on the circle and the center. So I can use the distance formula to express r. Let's remind ourselves of what the distance formula looks like in general. The distance is equal to the principal square root of the difference of the x-coordinates, that quantity squared, plus the difference of the y-coordinates, that quantity squared, but let's apply what we're using here uh, to understand how that would apply specifically to this circle. So in our case, the distance is the radius. That's the distance between the center and a point out on the circle. And my two points, uh, let's use the point x, y, which is out on the circle, and the center, which is the point h, k, the ordered pair h, k, and if I look then at the difference of the x-coordinates, that would become x minus h squared. And remember, the x is literally going to be the variable x because it represents any point on the circle. And the difference of the y-coordinates would be y minus k squared. So this is just applying the distance formula to what I have in my picture. Now, what I do next is this. I simply square both sides of the equation, which is quite legal to do, and then the equation would look like this. On the left, you would now have r squared, and on the right, squaring the principal square root will make the square root go away, and you would just have what's under the radical, the radicand, And for aesthetic purposes, we reverse the two sides of that equation. And if you've already read in the book and, saw, and seen this, voila, we have the, what we call the center radius form of the equation of a circle. That's where it comes from, simply from the definition and the distance formula. Now, once you have that, it is very, very easy to use. On the next slide, uh, I just rewrite what we just concluded here. The center radius form of a circle is given by that equation right there. The h and the k refer to the coordinates of the center of the circle, and the radius refers, the r rather, refers to the radius. So let's apply that to a specific example. Let's suppose that your center is 2, negative 3, and your radius is 4. Well, as we plug into this general form, the x again remains x, representing any point on the circle. The h is 2, so you replace the h with 2, and then there's a square. Now watch what happens here very, very carefully. 
uh, my value for k is negative, so I'd have y minus negative 3 squared equals 4. That's my radius. I replaced the r with 4. And the only thing I have to remember is that subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So my final center radius form for this circle would look exactly like this. We simplify very, very little. We, uh, we consider that subtracting the negative is the positive, and we go ahead, oh, maybe we will actually go ahead and correctly square the 4. I did want to say 4 squared is 16. Sorry about that. So we do that much. Now that's center radius form. You'll see in some questions in the book that they ask you to take that, you'll see I've rewritten the center radius form here, and rewrite it in what's called general form. Now general form simply means this, you literally square the two binomials that you have, and you can do that by using a distributive law, a FOIL rule, or by just recognizing that you have a, per you're going to be having a perfect square trinomial, and you might remember from earlier that when you square a binomial, you will get the first term squared, and then the sign will persist. The middle term would be two times the product of the first and last terms of the binomial, so 2 times x times 2, or 4x. And then finally, the second term of the binomial squared, 2 squared would give me a 4. And again, you could use the FOIL rule or the distributive law and see the same thing. Do the same thing with y plus 3 squared. You'd first of all have y squared, and then 2 times 3 times y, or 6y. And finally, 3 squared, which would be 9. And you have the 16 on the other side. Now, to get in general form, what we do is we write, we rearrange some terms here. We write the x squared term first, the y squared term second, the x term third, the y term fourth, so your degree two terms come first and then your degree one terms. And then finally you put all your constants together, including subtracting the radius squared from both sides so that you have a zero on the right. And then finally what you would do is combine the constant terms, so 4 plus 9 is 13, minus 16 is minus 3. This would be what we would call general form. So as we go through more videos, you will see many other examples of using center radius form and using general form and graphing circles and looking at some interesting special cases but I hope that gets you a nice start.